Hello, Team FD, and welcome back to Winners and Losers, the show we break down the latest and greatest Premier League action. However, Thugie, we won't be doing that this morning, will we? Because the hot topic, the headlines, the Twitter feed, it's all about Cristiano Ronaldo. He's overshadowed last night's result, Manchester United beating Fulham 2-1 in dramatic fashion, of course. I was actually quite looking forward to talking about Alejandro Garnacho, but like I said... Needs must. And we're talking about the fact that Cristiano Ronaldo feels betrayed by Manchester United, which he, of course, announced in a late and very dramatic interview with Pierce Morgan. Didn't think I'd be mentioning Pierce Morgan on this show. I feel like I've sullied winners and losers forever now. But before we get started, how are you, mate? How was your weekend? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I had a nice weekend watching multiple sports. But yeah, this bombshell news on Sunday night rocks my world. Yeah, multiple sports is your favourite kind of sports mm. as well. You are Mr Sports, aren't you? Yeah, let's get in to the nitty gritty of this episode then. Now, we understand that Ronaldo was told on Thursday that he would be in the not be in the starting 11, sorry, uh, but he would be in the squad to face Fulham. He then told the club he was ill, uh, so subsequently wasn't involved. Uh, and the club only found out about the interview as they were preparing to fly back from London after the victory over Fulham. So, Dukes, mm -hmm. let's open up on a few of the remarks he made then and draw some conclusions. Starting with betrayed and, you know, the notion that Manchester United's hierarchy and Eric Ten Hag are trying to force him out. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't just talking about this season either. He was talking about last season that he didn't feel like certain executives wanted him there. Um, he was, you know, happy with his performances last year. And then he just says that he's been let down by the club, um, that he didn't feel welcome at the club anymore, which is strange given he was the one that didn't go on a pre-season tour. He's the one that's refused to come off the bench at various points. He's the one that's, you know, generally acted incredibly petulant in, in you know, th the, throughout the entirety of this season. And the timing just couldn't be worse. I mean, United, as you say, coming off that 2-1 win against Fulham, you know, with a last minute winner from a young player who everyone's incredibly excited about. And then they're breaking for the World Cup. So it's not like they even have a chance to respond to what he said or try and ease that relationship. And it just now feels like he's picked the worst possible time, but the best possible time for him yeah. to, get his, to get his points across. He also, you know, went hell for leather at Ralph Rangnick, saying he didn't know who he was when he was appointed interim coach last year. He also had a dig at the evolution at Man United, or the lack of it, since Fergie left. Uh, and also gave pelters to Wayne Rooney as well, who he said wasn't as attractive as him as well. So it's just a really childish interview at the worst possible time for Man United. Yes, and Wayne Rooney remarks are where I draw the line, <laughs> quite frankly. Yeah, just to open up on a few things that you mentioned there. I mean, he was allegedly looking to leave Manchester United in the summer because he wanted to play Champions League football to sort of consolidate his Champions League goal-scoring record, his legacy, which we know he holds in high regard. Messi breathing down his neck in that regard. He does forever want to be remembered as Mr Champions League. That's pretty clear. Although ironic that his saving grace this season in terms of goals and assists has been in the Europa League. Um, he didn't go on Manchester United's pre-season tour. There was obviously a bereavement in the family. So that is understandable. But he also left pre-season friendlies early, didn't he? Mm. He left the stadium didn't join in with his teammates uh, following various results, like the friendly against Rayo Vallecano, which I think most fans found unacceptable at the time. And this is obviously a big old evolution of that. He did also say, and I feel this was the most damning remark, I don't have any respect for him because he doesn't show any respect for me. Obviously, sounding out Eric Ten Hag there. And when you draw a line... <laughs> That clearly, uh, it feels to me like there is no coming back from it unless the club choose the player over the manager, which in this situation doesn't feel like it's going to happen. Uh, that feels like a very sm uh, small percentage in terms of outcome. Um, and yeah, like you said, I, I find it quite strange that he's choosing to to criticise the appointment of Ralph Ranić when we know he was a stopgap mm. Um I think, you know, saying he lacks the calibre to, uh, to manage Manchester United, true, but lacks context. And he also sort of mirrored a lot of what Ranić said in his exit interview in the interview with Piers Morgan. So, yeah, did find big aspects of this very, very bizarre. Um, let's move on then to, you know, some of the form he has been demonstrating. And I want your opinion on where you think 
this tiff, I mean, that is an understatement, yeah. will take us. Um, because they're not relying on him, are they, this season like they were last season. He got 18 league goals in 27 starts last campaign. Uh, but in 16, competition, uh, 16 matches in all competitions this season, he's only managed five goal involvements, four of them coming in the Europa League. Um, so, like I said, kills the post-match positivity of the Fulham game. And now we're sort of thinking, what next? Uh, in your opinion, what do you think he's going to unfurl? I'd be very surprised if he played for the club again. But then he has so few options on, on where he's going to go. But before we get into that, maybe just talk about the team and, and how it works. And, and, you know, Rashford has has been back this year. I think his form has been excellent. Marshall was probably going to be Eric Ten Hag's starting number nine until he got injured and, and, you know, lost his way slightly at the start of this season in terms of his fitness. Mm. So there's, there is competition there. And Ronaldo, based on his performances this year, and I, this is what I really struggle with when everyone's like, you know, they're missing Ronaldo. His performances this season, if you only take it on this season, just haven't been good enough. Mm. And I don't think he makes the team better. You can see that, you know, to get the best out of him, they're often trying to, you know, you know, work it into the into the down the flanks, then get crosses in, which isn't really the strengths of Anthony and Sancho. I think they're much better dribblers, much better at taking the play on and then looking for a, a cheeky pass in behind, which Marshall and Rashford often, uh, you know, really Provide, benefit yeah. from. So it doesn't feel like the team is set up to work for Ronaldo, really. And his performances haven't deserved to be featured in the side. So, you know, he talks about a lack of respect from Ten Hag. Ten Hag has actually, I think, been really publicly very pro him. Maybe yeah. captain for one game, of course. And hasn't really hammered him in the press when he has left games early or just shown general dissatisfaction with not playing regularly. And I just feel like this has shown, actually, that Ronaldo is put himself once again way above the team in this instance um, because I don't think that many other pros having got to his age having you know achieved what they have in the game surely they'd have a better understanding of where the team is at and what is best for the team and mm. at the moment Ronaldo is just not you know United's best number nine. No I think that's a really key point based on merit he doesn't make it into the strongest starting 11. I think his conversion rate in the Premier League at current is four percent. Oh, good. Uh, I also agree with your points on Eric Ten Hag. I think he's handled this whole thing with a lot of grace and decorum. He could have thrown Cristiano Ronaldo onto the pitch against Manchester City when they were 4-0 down, but he showed strength of character and didn't. And in his post-match interview, he said it was out of respect for Ronaldo's career, where he's at, at current, uh, in his playing career. And I actually think he showed good strength of character, like I said there, not to just haul him on mm. uh, because that was the easy decision in my opinion but not necessarily the right decision um, so yeah I think Eric Ten Hag has handled things extremely well um, so and I think the fans will be on his side I think Jamie Carragher tweeted as much last night right that 99% of the fan base will be on the Dutchman's side I also find it quite ironic that Ronaldo is criticising the sort of club's culture going back to the whole the, the Ranić remarks as well when this is a coach that made a 36-year-old the highest paid player in the Premier League. Who could have foresaw it? Uh, things <laughs> unravelling. Anyway, uh, like I said, let's, let's start to speculate or, or guess as to what can happen next. Because in the past, there's been possible returns to sporting mooted. Chelsea, um, more specifically Todd Burley, was interested in making him their stopgap number nine. I mean, if Manchester United do seek to bring this escapade to a close um, where can you see him heading I, I genuinely don't know I think it's so so difficult I mean the clubs that were linked with him in the summer Napoli and Dortmund I seem to remember you know Hans Joachim Vatska the chief executive of Dortmund came out and just thought it was a bit of a joke to be honest yeah Aurelio De Laurentiis was like that is absolutely not happening the only club which were linked with him with any great degree of certainty in the summer were Chelsea and that supposedly caused a major rift between Thomas Tuchel and Todd Bowley, which eventually led to Tuchel's departure. He can't go to the MLS, or it's going to be incredibly difficult for him to go to the MLS due to previous allegations for off-the-pitch matters. We don't need to get into that now, but you know what I'm talking about. And sporting CP, can they afford his wages? No, absolutely not. So I genuinely don't know how it ends. Mm. Maybe he goes from you know being the highest paid player in the, in the Premier League to to someone that is paid uh, a nominal fee at Sporting because a return to his boyhood club might help repair some of the damage that this uh, interview has done uh, in terms of his image. Uh, and hopefully it reignites his love for the game because at 37, obviously still has a lot to give mm. owing to his incredible athleticism and 
skill, uh, which is the, the sad thing in all this. He could yeah. still be playing at a Champions League level club, probably just not at a Premier League team that has aspirations to finish in the top three, top four, right? And, and that play in the style that Eric Ten Hag does. Absolutely, and 38 games a season, which I think is probably the crucial point. Like He doesn't acknowledge that his, his body, as great as it is physically, you know, he can't play 50 games, starting mm. 50 games a season anymore, which is what United need from their number nine. And to build a new side for Ten Hag, who is a long-term manager, mm. ideally, or wants to be a long-term manager at United, it makes far more sense to build it around Rashford, Martial, Garnacho, Anthony, try and get Sancho into some form. So from Ten Hag's perspective, in terms of team building over the next two, three years, it makes perfect sense to make Ronaldo a bit part player, and he just hasn't taken it well. And I do understand Ronaldo, um, his sort of inability to come to terms with the fact that maybe athletically... Oh, his time at the very top is over. I can understand why one of the greatest of all time doesn't necessarily come away from the sport he loves that he's dedicated his life to uh, in the smoothest way possible because there's an awful lot of friction, emotion, tension there uh, and you have to come to terms with becoming a whole new person, a whole, a whole other persona, right? Um, so I do understand that. But yes, it... T to say this is anything other than, than self-interest, I think, is misleading. Um, so that is our thoughts on the matter. I mean, I wanted to talk about Garnacho, who now has as many Premier League goals this season as Ronaldo, by the by, uh, and is looking extremely exciting. But I guess we'll save that for a future episode. Right, team, stay tuned for more winners and losers coming your way. Uh, we'll catch up with you in just a second. But before you go, like this video, subscribe to the channel with notifications on if you haven't already. And yeah, we'll see you soon.